All right, welcome everybody to a new uh, module. In this one, what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the first order differential equations. Okay, and in the upcoming module, we're looking at second order and higher order differential equations. In reality, first order differential equations are a little bit more easier to solve. So let's buy, go by that. Then we'll go ahead and look at a little bit more complex situations. Okay, but just to recap the module one, we look at what is the definition of DE. We classify it according to its type. We said ODE, PDE, right? We looked at the notation, Leibniz notation, prime notation, Newton's dot notation, subscript notation for mostly for PDEs, and I saw classified by order, and that's where I come in with the first order, right? Um, and also we looked at the general solution, particular solution, singular solution, trivial solution, solution curves, right? We looked at IVP, which is the initial valid problem, initial condition, boundary valid problem as well as the existence of a unique solution. But now, let's use what we learned in module one, okay? And as you can see, actually the first um, title under the first order differential equation is solution curves without a solution. So this is kind of interesting. So this, this requires an explanation. I said that I'm gonna go ahead and solve the questions, but let's, let's look at the general case. Let's say that a differential equation is given to me. It can be actually OD or PDE, it doesn't really matter. For this case, I'm looking at the ODE, ordinary differential equations. Okay, there there will be three conditions over here. Okay, I uh, may not have a solution. I discussed this in the first module as well. I may write any differential equation I want for the mathematics end, but what does it represent in physical terms? If it doesn't represent anything physical that exists in real life then there may not be a solution, right? So even a simple equation like this, let's say dy dx square plus 2 is equal to 0. So for instance, this doesn't have a solution, right? Even the, a simple equation, differential equation, first order, right? It's not a second order. Did you realize that? Looking at here, this is the uh, square of the first order. It doesn't make it the second order. It's the first order. Um, this may not have a solution. Um, I may have solution. Let's call this actually analytical solution, right? And the third one is it may have a solution which we cannot find analytically. So let's look at these two last two cases. So it may have an integral solution, and most of the things that we're going to focus in this chapter along with the others for the rest of the semester is going to be in this domain, right? I'm looking at cases where I should have some analytical solution. But also at the same time, I can have a solution, but I may not be able to find it, right? So which will, which will be the one that you want me to ask you in the exam? I bet you want me to ask this, right? If I ask you this, then that's not good, right? Or may not have a solution also not good you'll try and you'll not be able to achieve what you need so I just want to put into the context in here all right so not every single equation will have a solution so as this uh, purple I would say uh, font says solution curves without a solution what does that mean so let's say that we don't have a solution however um, should I just simply say that okay I don't have a solution and you know kind of end this segment and start with a brand new one no i can still do something about it okay even if the case is i don't have a solution i can learn a lot about a differential equation by looking at or rather the studying the behavior of it at different points mm, along with one important thing we will look at will be the i can look at this derivative dy dx okay if you look at a dy dx at a particular point do you really do you realize what it gives me it gives me the slope right the derivative of a function is its slope. So I can get my slope for that particular point. And okay, so that's good. So if I apply this to one particular point, I'm going to get a slope for that. So let's say that I have a point and look in the test, I will get my slope right there. Okay, so, so what is the big deal? Well, wait a second, wait a second. I didn't say that you should do it only for one point. So if I look at this derivatives, at many points. So think about this. Over here, 
I have another slope over here, another slope over here, another slope. Do you see where I'm going with this? This is actually the solution curve. So by, for me, to plot the slopes at many, many different points, I will be able to obtain, it's something called the direction field. This is called the direction field, so, or slope field. I'll talk about this in a minute, in, in a little bit more detail, and I'll give examples, okay? And as I just did for you, if I connect the points on a slope field, it will be, it will give me an idea how the solution will look like, all right? So this is actually fairly powerful. I think the best thing actually is to illustrate this with an example. That will be the easiest. Actually, let's go to the new page. If you didn't realize already, this is the page indicator for this particular app I'm using. So let's give this dy dx is equal to 0.2 xy. It's an example, okay? And you know, I said that um, this is applicable to solution curves. How am I gonna obtain for a case where I don't have a solution? But actually, I do have a solution for this. Okay, so if I do separation of variables, actually, I can go ahead and solve this and let me illustrate that to you. So I can do this dy over y, right? So I simply what I did was well, I move y to here and I'll move dx to there, okay? And that will be is equal to 0.2x dx. So if I take the integral of both sides, you'll see that I'm going to get ln y will be equal to 0.1 x squared, right? Because 0.2 divided by 2 is 0.1 x squared plus a constant of c. And just like I did in the module 1, I was giving an example. I do e to the power of ln y, and I'll do the e to the power of right-hand side as well. e to the power of ln y will give me y, and e to the power of 0.1 x squared plus c. Okay. I already discussed this, so I'm not going to show the details. You may want to look at the previous video, but basically it gives me this e to the power of 0.1x squared. So you can see that I was able to obtain a general solution. In order for me to go to the particular solution, now I need an initial condition so I can find the value of d and call it a day. Okay? So why am I solving a, you know, the title of this plus solution curves without a solution, but I'm looking at a solution? Is I want to compare those two. Right? Let's pretend that there's no solution to this and draw the direction field or the slope field and see whether there's any re relation between those two. Obviously, this needs to be defined in a particular interval. So, so I'm going to assume that each block over here is like, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is going to be, you know, if I go ahead and write that, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Same thing, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. I can do minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. I'll do the same 1, 2, 3. And for a good measure, let's be symmetric. And this will be 4 as well. All right, good. So I said that I need to look at dy dx. That will be give, giving me the direction field, right? Or slope field. So if I look at the question, you see that this is given as 0.2 xy. Let's look at the x axis, right? So let's call this x, let's call this y. So let's look at the x axis. If x is equal to 0, what will happen to y dy dx? You clearly see that it's going to be 0, right? Because then it's going to be 0 0.2 times 0 times whatever the y is. So regardless of where I'm at, you will see that if I draw this like this, it's called y, that's why it's called the direction. You can see that it is kind of 0. All right? So from the same token, when I look at the y-axis, let's stop by that as well, and what you're going to obtain is you're going to get dy dx is also going to be 0. So you can see the arrows now, it's going to be like this. And please note that there are infinite of these uh, arrows. I'm just taking integers just to get some point across. Okay. If in the first quadrant that I have, it means this one, right? So all my x and y, y values will be positive, right? So what this means is if I have a 0 0.2 times x times y, I will get a plus value in here. I hope everybody does see that, right? Because let's say that my x is 1, y is equal to 2, I'll get a plus value, right? Regardless of what values you put in, you're going to get a positive value. How about the, this second quadrant that I have? If you don't know what the second quadrant is, it's over here. And for that, I'm going to get myself 0 0.2 times x, which is a negative value, x is a negative value, 
y is a positive value, so I'm going to get myself a negative value in here. Okay, so I'm not going to repeat myself, but you can see in here is negative negative becomes a positive, and x positive y negative gives me a negative. Okay, so right right off the bat, I get some idea of what how the behavior is at, at each quadrant. Okay, so now. Let's say that, let's pick some points on here. Okay, x and y, just like this. Let's say 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, comma 4, right? At 2, 1, what would be the value? 0 0.2 times 2 will be 0 0.4. 2 times 2, so that's going to be the twice of it, 0 0.8, 1.2, 1.6. I'm simply going ahead and multiplying 0 0.2 times 2 times 1, 0 0.2 times 2, 3, 4, right? So that's what I get. So you can see that as I go up over here, from here, it was 0, now it's 0, 4, 0, 8, 1.2, 1.6. .1 so if I draw this and it's a positive, so I'm going to draw this, the po positive means that it's going to be like this. Some slope, increased slope, even further increased slope, and much slope much steeper slope, right? Because remember, dy dx is the slope. So if I'm plotting the slope of these, you can see that as I'm going up and up, again, there's in real, there's infinite of these, right? The slope is increasing and increasing and increasing, okay? Okay, now let's do another uh, case over here. So now I'm gonna look at y is equal to um, two. So now another case, let's do this one. One comma two, two comma two, which I know, 3, 2, and 4, 2. So y's are the same, but now this time around I'm increasing the x, right? So from the same logic, I'm going to get myself 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2, and 1.6, okay? So you can see that what happens is a similar trend happens. So this is kind of symmetric. So this, I'm hoping that I will be able to draw this over here with the same slope. Ah, ish, right? You kind of see the point. So it goes up goes even further right so this and this is the same this and this is the same this and this is the same all right and I can do the same treatment for the um, let's say second quadrant and I can do this I go up 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 I do the same over here this time around what you will see is let's let's actually do one case and then I'm not gonna do the whole thing but you do see that, let's take, um, yeah, let's take x is equal to minus 2, y is equal to 1, minus 2, minus 2, 3, minus 2, 4. So if I multiply this, I'm going to get my dy dx as uh, minus 0 0.4, minus 0 0.8, minus 1.2, minus 1.6. So you can see that. Um, it is decreasing in terms of the mathematical value of it. So if I go ahead and uh, actually plot this over here, the slopes that I have, it's going to be like this. It's going to be more slope, even furthermore, and even steeper. So the point I'm making over here is similar to this, right? As I go up, the slope increases. Over here, the slope increases in a negative way, right? So that's why it's pointing down. Um, so we can do a similar analysis for this side. So this nice to be symmetric to this. So let's see whether I will be able to accomplish that. So it's like this and it's like that, right? So just to uh, state this and this is the same, this and this is the same, this and this is the same as well. I'm not repeating the mathematical analysis because it's symmetric. I can go ahead and do the same thing for the third quadrant, which is going to be positive. So if you think about this, this will be kind of copy pasted over here, right? Because let's look here. Um, if I have this, whether it's minus two, minus one, doesn't matter, right? The multiplication is still zero four. So this is kind of like take this and copy paste to here, take this and copy paste over here as well, okay? But due to the time limitation, you know, I, I don't want you to bore you to death. So I'm not gonna do the whole thing for you, right? But one thing I'm gonna do is, the reason why I wanted to show a case where it is a solution is I can plot the family of solutions. Actually, let's, let me go ahead and plot that. No need for you to watch me 
plotting a complicated curve, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So this is supposed to be symmetric, by the way, with respect to the y-axis, all right? So this slope, like, like you can see, it may not be looking same, but it is the same. It's just my drawing. And also it is symmetric with respect to the x-axis as well, right? Um, before I go out and talk individual points, one thing I want to make sure is this. Look at the slopes. I said that at the, over here it's supposed to be positive, it's supposed to be negative, it's supposed to be positive, it's supposed to be negative over here. So let's look here. Look at the slopes. The slopes are positive here, negative here, right, because it's the direction that I'm traveling, like, like this. As I go from, let's say, minus 5 to minus 1, right, I'm going in that direction. And this is positive. We see it's increasing the value. Over here it's decreasing the value. So there is some consistency there. The second thing I want to talk about is, let's pick um, a particular uh, line. So let's look at the slopes over here. So you can see the slopes is fairly shallow over here. It's increasing. It's increasing further. And I mean, I don't even intersect with that line, but it's going to be real steep towards here. And look what I had over here. Uh-huh. Isn't this similar, right? Less steep, more, more, more. So I can do the same analysis. For this as well, you can see, look look how it this looks, right? And let's look here, you'll see the same behavior, right? You know, we're looking at the slopes over here. So now you get to see that this uh, solution curves and the slope or direction field are constant. So this will give me an idea even if there's no solution to it, okay? Do, do, do you see from here, can you make the jump by looking at the slopes to the curves? Yeah, you can, but then you need to plot many more numbers. If you draw this for many, many different uh, points, you're going to get yourself a more, much more realistic representation of the solution. All right? So this pretty much wraps this particular uh, segment. Um, thank you for watching. I will catch up with you in the next segment. Thanks.